Well, it turns out the hype is real. I actually had no idea there were so many people looking forward to Genshin Impact. I actually thought I needed to try extra hard to convince people it was worth playing because free to play and gacha are incredibly dirty words outside of mobile gaming exclusives. I don't blame anyone for being turned off by free to play and gacha though. As I explained in my last video, I was turned off by it when I first heard about it. But after being thoroughly convinced by my time with the game that it really wasn't a problem, and even more so thoroughly confused about why this was the game's monetization model in the first place, I thought I had conveyed that well enough in said previous video. I didn't though. Not for lack of trying, but for lack of understanding. It's unlike any gacha or free to play model I have personally experienced. So I did a whole lot of research and this is what I've come up with. to start off by pointing out that the mere existence of a gacha or loot boxes isn't bad or predatory or scummy all on its own. The reason they have such a negative association nowadays is after years and years of progressively more and more manipulative models that are built around a gacha. Within an hour of playing most mobile games with a gacha, you'll be able to see where the bottlenecks are, as in how the game is going to try and manipulate you into spending money. Most mobile games do something called front loading, which is when they give the player lots and lots of gems or premium currency when they first start playing. They do this in many ways, by having a bunch of one-time achievements for very easy tasks, have you level up very quickly and what have you. This gives the illusion that you're always going to get plenty of gems for free, but in reality they will dry up relatively fast. The models can differ from this point, but some very common systems you'll see are a stamina system, which limits the amount of time you can play the game or how many missions you can attempt. Once you're hooked, this tempts you to spend your free gems on replenishing this resource, which leaves less for the gacha. A hero upgrade system where you need multiple copies of the same hero in order for them to reach full power. Resources for upgrading characters or gear might be locked behind challenges that are impossible to complete without having a set of already powerful characters that are only obtainable through the gacha. And there are a million other little quirks and nuances that go into building a free to play gacha or loot box model. These things only work though because there is something in place that drives your desire to get new heroes from the gacha. A lot of free to play gacha games have a player vs player mode, where the length at which you can be competitive depends on how much you spend. This is typically a pay to win model. If your party of 6 heroes needs 5 duplicates each for them to reach full power, somebody who spends thousands of dollars on the gacha to get all those duplicates is going to be much stronger in PvP than somebody who only spends a small amount and gets maybe 1 or 2 duplicates. Even simpler than that is just releasing stronger and stronger heroes that are only available in the gacha at a very low drop rate. Rather than a PvP mode, a game might have a leaderboard of some kind. The end game might be about taking on specific challenges, and the players who do the best get listed on a leaderboard, and they're given rewards for placing high on that leaderboard. Another common tactic, specifically in licensed games or games based on an existing popular series, is to simply lock the most popular characters from the series behind the gacha. So if you're playing a Dragon Ball Z mobile game and really love Goku for some reason, they'll put all of the coolest forms of Goku in the gacha. So you see, there's always a reason for you to want to use the gacha, whether it's to get the most powerful characters to be competitive in PvP, or to get your favourite character from your favourite series. Essentially, the game is the gacha. These games all have auto battle, or auto complete, or mission skips, and their gameplay is incredibly simplistic, but also very time consuming. You find that you aren't really playing a game at all, you're just grinding auto battles over and over until you can have another spin on the gacha, because there's no real game. That is unfortunately the state of mobile gaming for the most part, and I have more or less accepted that this is the kind of thing you'll have to endure if you want to experience any of the surprisingly good stories there are in the mobile space. But almost none of what I just said can be applied to Genshin Impact, and the couple of things that can be are implemented in an odd way. 
For a start, there is no front loading. There is no real emphasis on the gacha at all, and no real need to use it. There is no PvP, there are no leaderboards. There is co-op, but it only allows a maximum of four players and kind of seems like an afterthought. There's no mass player lobby where you can show off your characters and you won't see other random players out in the world like an MMO. The game is not based on an already established IP, so they can't tempt you with already popular characters. There is nothing in the game at launch that cannot be done with the regular non-gacha characters you get through the story. There is no auto battle or mission skip. The gameplay is definitely not simplistic. It doesn't have the structure of a mobile game or an auto clicker or a time waster. Having played it on PC, I still have trouble believing this game is going to be on mobile at all. It just doesn't seem possible. So why is it free to play then? Why does it have a gacha? How do they expect to make money? Well, for all intents and purposes, Genshin Impact is kind of two separate games. Genshin Impact is a near fully realized single player action RPG with a near complete story and 100 plus hours of content, with limited co-op to play with friends. Genshin Impact is also a character gacha with some of the concepts from current mobile game free to play models, but these two segments barely interact with each other. The best way to describe it is like Fallout 4 and Fallout Shelter, except instead of Fallout 4 being a console game and Fallout Shelter being a separate mobile game, they're both just kind of in one game. For this type of game, it's a new approach as far as I can tell. Mobile games generally get people in and get them invested by being based on an already popular franchise. They don't really need to offer compelling gameplay to get people to play. Genshin Impact's approach to the problem of not being based on an existing series is something similar to what we've seen in certain MMOs. Star Wars The Old Republic added a free to play option some years ago. It allows you to play the entire game and experience the entire story of at least one create a character class. It's quite a large experience to offer for free, but their goal is obviously to get people invested enough that they join the monthly subscription model or spend money through various microtransactions. In a similar vein, Genshin Impact is offering people a very large, very compelling, predominantly single player RPG with what appears to be a complete story arc for free, in the hopes that by the time players have finished the story or reached max level, they'll be invested enough to stick around and play what is essentially a mobile game loop of daily activities and upgrading characters. The reason it feels like a different approach to something like Star Wars The Old Republic is because Star Wars The Old Republic is very obviously an MMO with very grindy MMO gameplay. Genshin Impact just feels like you're playing any other single player RPG for the most part. As far as the gacha goes, from what we've seen so far, the way they plan to tempt people into using it is by offering waifu and husbando designs, pretty much just making nice looking characters. None of the gacha characters thus far have anything necessary for story progression. They don't even really have any abilities that are of great advantage. They mostly boil down to mild conveniences at best, while most are next to useless. One of the revealed gacha characters has an ability that reduces fall damage, but you have a glider that you can pop open before you land. There are very few times you'll ever take fall damage at all. Another gacha character decreases the stamina drain for sprinting by a small amount, which I guess is a nice little bonus, but it's certainly not of high importance or necessity. The other piece of the monetization puzzle is the inclusion of a battle pass. It's not 100% clear how this is going to work in global markets just yet, but in the Chinese tests it appeared to work like this. Every player gets a battle pass for free. It's basically just a list of tasks or activities that give you rewards as you complete them. You can pay the equivalent of $10 US for 40 days, might be 30 days, I'm not 100% sure, but it upgrades the battle pass giving you greater rewards. Most of the rewards though are really just to do with end game character upgrading, you know, the standard mobile game loop that appears to form the basis of the end game.
So, as I said in my preview, I'm not worried at all about the state of the game at launch. It's the future that's uncertain. There is nothing stopping them in the future from making their monetization schemes more tempting or more necessary by adding new content that can only be completed with new gacha characters or something like that. But at the same time, what are you playing this game for? If what you want to play is a single player open world RPG, that's what you're getting here, and you're getting it for free. Once you finish the story and do all the side quests you want to do, you shut the game off and move on to the next game. It's hard to criticize this game for having a gacha when that part of the game is so far removed from any part of the game that is actually compelling. The gacha isn't the game here, the game is the game. It's real. Its goal is to get players so invested that they won't want to turn it off once they've finished it, and it's trying to achieve this goal by being good. Genshin Impact is doing what a lot of recent Western Games as a Service titles are doing, like The Avengers for example. It has a single player campaign, but its goal is to get you to stick around to do repetitive multiplayer stuff where they'll happily sell you microtransactions. The difference is that Genshin Impact, unlike all of these other games as a service, isn't charging you full price up front to play the single player campaign. Not to mention that Genshin Impact is offering a far larger and more compelling single player experience than a 10-20 hour half-assed campaign. If this is what free-to-play models were, if this is what they'd always been doing, I don't think anybody would be calling them predatory. I don't think the words free-to-play or gacha would be shrouded in such negativity. Now don't get me wrong, as I've already pointed out, there is always that potential for it to go downhill in the future, and I certainly wouldn't want this to be the model that all console and PC games have in the future. I like the paying up front and getting a proper game system that we have now, but it's really, really hard not to be gushing with positivity about this game because I absolutely loved my time with it and I'm quite sure I'm going to continue loving it when it launches in less than a week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.